Hey there, Mr. Reddit here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parent Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today. Entitled Jerk Tries to Ask Me Out, His Entitled Mom Steps In. After that, Entitled Mom Wants Me to Weigh Her Candy at the Movie Theater. And after that, My Son Can't Move Out on Time, It's Too Mentally Stressful. Now for every thumbs up this video gets, one Karen gets kicked out of the movie theater. You can't make me. So please smash that like button. And if you're new, subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. Entitled Jerk Tries to Ask Me Out, His Entitled Mom Steps In. Cast. We've got me, Ellie. We've got Entitled Kid. We've got Entitled Mom. We've got my brothers, Chris and Keith. For some context, I am 5 foot 1. I'm tiny. People would say I'm attractive, doesn't always work in my favor. I'm at the mall with my two brothers, but I went to Forever 21 while they went somewhere else. I get everything and I start to walk out of the store. Entitled Kid stops me. Hi, uh, I'm Entitled Kid. Me. Hi, Entitled Kid. Do I know you? Entitled Kid. Uh, no, but are we in Paris? I don't say anything. Entitled Kid doesn't say anything. Me. No? Entitled Kid. Cause I fell for you. Me. Oh, that's funny. Haha. <laughs> I'm Ellie, but I'm sorry. I'm already in a relationship. Entitled Kid. Did I ask that? Haha. <laughs> Me. Well, I'm very loyal to my boyfriend, and I think I'm a bit older than you. Well, who says you can't have a guy on the side? You look like a party girl, and you're wearing short shorts. You can't wear those if you have a boyfriend. Stop making excuses. Me. First of all, I can wear whatever I want and Titled Kid blocks me in with his hands. Me. Please stop. I don't feel comfortable. At this point, I see a woman standing a ways off, watching this intensely. I figure it's his mother. And Titled Kid. Come on, you probably go to school with me. I mean, you're shopping at our town mall. Me. Oh, I'm very sorry but I'm actually 23 and don't go to high school anymore. Oh, stop lying. You're like four feet tall. Me. Entitled kid, I'm sorry about this. I'm 23 and you're like 16. Oh my God, you do go to school with me. That's how you know I'm 16. Me. Look, I can't date you. I'm sure you'll find a great girl that you can take to prom and whatever. I start to move his hands out of the way and Entitled Mom runs over at the speed of sound. Entitled kid starts sniffling. Entitled mom. How dare you speak to my son that way? Me. Ma'am, he's 16. Be quiet. Okay, entitled kid, work your magic now. Entitled mom steps back. Entitled kid. So, you want to go down to Texas Roadhouse or something? Entitled mom, evil grin. Me. Look, entitled kid, you're a great kid, but I'm too old for you. Entitled mom. Ah, nope. You're going to go with him. If you're that picky, you can choose the place. Me. No, I'm not going to go anywhere with him. I don't care. She grabs my wrist. Me. Stop. Leave me alone. I try to get out of Entitled Mom's grip, but I'm too tiny. An Entitled Kid grabs my other hand. I scream and manage to start calling my brother on my watch. Keith and Chris came running. Now, I got the short end of the stick with the height. My mom's entire family is tall. Chris is 6 foot 7 and Keith is 6 foot 4. Chris, let go of her. Keith, now, I'm not asking again. I don't know where the security guards were here. Maybe it was just a crappy mall. Entitled mom lets go and pretends she's hurt. But they shut that down real quick. Entitled mom was pretty intimidated by them. She was probably only 5 foot 6. Entitled mom. Well, my son is asking her on a date. That's all, a date. Chris, well, how old is your son? Ellie is 23. Entitled kid, I'm 16. Keith, let go of her, entitled kid. She's seven years older than him. Are we done here? Entitled mom, she's not 23. She looks like she's 16. I want proof. I show entitled mom my driver's license. Well, that could be fake. Just go on a date with him. Or just as friends. It's not that hard. Me. No. Goodbye. Entitled kid in the distance. Can I have your number? We walk away and enjoy some Panera. Please respect people's boundaries and be sensible.
Wow, it sounds like she really dodged a bullet on that one. Wrong. She's the one who's going to be missing out. That boy sounded perfect for her. He really reminded me of my son. I bet he did, Karen. I bet he did. And I really admire that mother for trying to help her son get what should be rightfully his. Karen? Yes? You are sick. <coughs> Entitled Mom wants me to weigh her candy at the movie theater. Having worked during college at the local movie theater, I came across all kinds of Karens. In this particular case, Karen went to the movies with her two kids, around the ages of four to five. As you guys know, movie theaters have high prices for snacks and drinks. It was Sunday morning, and usually this is a busy time with a lot of kids and kids movies. It's obvious that I'm dealing with a total Karen straight from the start, keeping on her sunglasses, chewing gum, and being on the phone the entire time she's waiting in line. When it's her turn, I think to myself, my shift just started. Just be nice and maybe this will all go over smoothly. It didn't. Karen is annoyed by the prices of the tickets. You can buy the tickets and your snacks at the same register and is not happy with the assortment of healthy snacks. I'm still there, trying to keep up my best smile like I'm the Joker in a low-budget Batman movie, but I'm getting through her order. Now for the kids. As they were acting like dogs running around the place, I will name them like dogs. So Kid 1 is Ollie, Kid 2 is Rex. Note, where I'm from, we have a display where you can scoop your own candy in a bag for a fixed price per 100 grams, 3.5 ounces. Being a movie theater, this is crazy expensive and a full bag can cost around 16 euro, 1750 US. Ollie, mommy, can we scoop some candy? Karen, how much for the candy? Me, it's 150 per 100 grams. Yes, Ollie, hurry up with the candy. Rex, mom, I want some candy too. Karen, Ali, help your brother get his candy. At this point, she already spent way too much time in line. Normally, you can scoop the candy before you make your purchase to prevent the transaction from taking an extremely long time and we can help the other customers. Not for Miss Karen though, she just goes back to texting on her phone. I'm baffled, annoyed, and just want to go help other customers because the movie is starting in 15 minutes and the lines for the registers are not moving at all. So me, the good Samaritan that I am, try to eyeball the bag of candy Ollie has so that I can get a rough estimate how much the candy will cost. To my enjoyment, I see the kid with an enormous bag of candy almost the size of his head. So I estimate that it will be around 15 euros. Rex's bag isn't that full, but he is still scooping and I think to myself, realistically, the price will be higher, but I just want this to be over and I don't want to overprice them. Me. The total will be 44 euros. Karen. What? Why is it so expensive? Me. Miss, the candy weighs a lot. And the price. But you didn't even weigh it. You're just trying to rip me off. Weigh it and give me the correct price. She says as she grabs the bags from Ollie and Rex. Well, she was correct. I didn't weigh it, but I wasn't trying to rip her off. Heck, I was giving her a huge discount. So I smiled to her and grabbed the bags of candy and put them on the scale. I can see the price and so can the customer. Me. Sure, miss. As you can see, the price of the candy costs 24 euros, so your total will be 53 euros. So of course Karen gets angry and wants me to call the manager because I am still ripping her off. The managers come along, weigh the candy and confirm that the price is 53 euros. Because you have to pay the candy when you grab it because of hygiene rules and there is a big sign, Karen eventually buys everything and walks away angry with her kids. Luckily for me, the manager was a nice dude, so I didn't get into trouble for guessing the weight. And at the end of the shift, I was glad I could ruin a movie experience for Karen. I guess Karen should have been paying a little more attention and a little less time on her phone. Oh, shut up, Mr. Reddit. That candy was way too expensive. I would have thrown it back in his face. You know, it sure was expensive. But hey, that's movie theaters for you. We usually just steal other people's popcorn when they aren't looking. Oh no, don't do that, Karen. Just sneak in some McDonald's in your purse. <laughs> that's feisty, Mr. Reddit. I know, right? But I still like my way better. My son can't move out on time. It's too mentally stressful. After being scarred by my internship, I finally have the space to think about it and remembered my favorite story. Cast, we've got me, 
poor graduate school intern. We've got entitled rich dad. We've got entitled kid, the college junior. And we've got the boss, my supervisor. I did my internship in Greek life at a very rich school. I ran the move out process for our chapter houses and we had informed the student since February what the May date was for move outs. They could apply for extinctions until about April 20th and most were accepted with a fee and accepted until the 27th with a late fee and a damage responsibility waiver for all extensions. Enter Entitled Kid. We have a lot of entitled kids at the school, but this entitled kid decides to apply May 1st and asks for a day extension because he didn't start packing until a few days before finals. When he is summarily rejected for being past even the late deadline, he calls the office screaming about how it isn't fair and how he obviously was studying for finals, so why should he pack? When that didn't work, he dropped by the office and was rejected again by me for the same reason. He let me know in the most snotty Draco Malfoy tone I had heard yet, I understand that there is nothing that I can do. My father will be giving you a call. Sure enough, about an hour later, Entitled Dad calls. Entitled Dad. Hello, is this OP? Me. Yes, this is she. Yes, I heard from my son that he would not be granted a move out extension. Me. Yes, unfortunately, he applied after the date and there are no other people approved for an extension in his house, so it was denied for safety purposes. An aside, there has been a tradition that seniors would try and coerce people with extensions to let them into the house after closing to party, and the seniors often trash the house, leaving thousands of dollars in damages. Entitled Dad, still in nice voice. Well, I just don't think that that's acceptable to us. I am concerned for his mental health while studying at this school, and he should not be packing during finals. Me. Sir, all students were reminded in February and April about move-out dates, and all move-out dates have been posted since last August. Entitled Dad. No, you don't understand that you are causing him mental distress. You will give him an extension. This is absolutely unacceptable. We do not pay thousands to go to this school for you to have him fail because of some stupid policy. Me, I am sorry you feel that way, sir. But again, we have reminded students several times about the extension application and unfortunately, he did not apply on time. Where is your supervisor? I demand to speak with him. Well, my supervisor was in a meeting. I told him so. He flips out more, and I hope my boss backs me up. He doesn't. The kid gets his extension. Why? Because Entitled Dad is friends with a board member, and my boss doesn't want it escalated. I hate rich schools. Just goes to show you why we should never procrastinate on doing the things we have to do. Unless you have a rich mommy or daddy who's friends with the board member. Fair enough, Karen. Fair enough. So you want this now? For free? And will have my job if I don't provide it? I was doing my end of month shopping trip, picking up necessities and some stuff for a barbecue I'm having this weekend. I had all the necessities and was heading to the frozen food slash meat section. I saw that someone had put a box of chicken fingers in the snack food section and figured I'd put it back while I was there. I had just finished putting it away, the chicken section is beside the deli, and went to walk away when I heard an Excuse me, with a super disgusted slash angry tone. I turned around and was greeted by a heavy set woman. Before I could say anything, she started in on me. You need to get me some ham. Me. Uh, the ham that's prepackaged is over there. Gestures behind me. You can go get it. Well, no, I want it from the deli and I'm in a hurry. So could you make it quick? Thanks. She looked down at her phone after that. So I just walked away to find some hamburger to make some delicious burgers. I picked up two packages and put it in my cart. As I was about to walk away, she rammed my cart and began yelling. I asked you to do something for me. Now do it. Me. Okay, maybe you didn't see, but I'm in a red sweater and shorts. Employees here are in a dark blue shirt and black pants. I don't work here. I can't help you. I saw you putting stuff away. You work here. Stop being lazy and do your dang job. Nearby employee sees slash hears what's happening and sends a manager over. Seen as heavyset woman refuses to let me leave and continues screeching that it's my job to assist her. As she's still screeching that she'll have my job, the manager walks up. Manager. 
Hi, I'm the manager here. What seems to be the problem? Karen. Your stupid employee here refuses to do her job. That's the problem. Me. I've told you, I don't work here. I'm literally trying to do my shopping right now. Gestures to my half full cart. You work here? I saw you putting stuff from that cart away. Stop lying. Turns to manager. I want her fired. She's lazy, incompetent, and has no right to talk to a customer like this. Manager. Well, I'm 100% sure she doesn't work here. So I can't. She cuts him off. Karen, in the most condescending tone. She was putting groceries away from the cart she's pushing. She works here. I know it. Don't treat me like I'm stupid. Fire her. Manager looks me up and down. Me. I don't work here. Can I please go and finish my shopping? Karen. Get me my ham and you can. I'm not paying for it either. It can come out of your check. Condescending tone again. If you get one after being fired, that is. Manager. Okay, look. She doesn't work here. She is most definitely not in our uniform. Gestures to himself. Please stop harassing our customers or you will be escorted out. Stop saying she doesn't work here. Me. Well, I don't work here. So, yeah. The manager was getting fed up and moved her cart from mine so I could walk away and finish my shopping. I heard Banshee-like screaming through the store for the next five minutes or so. Don't know what came out of it, but when I left the store, there were three cop cars sitting outside. Man, that Karen really wanted that ham, didn't she? Of course she did. Ham is the best. It is pretty good, isn't it? Too bad that lazy employee refused to help her. She wasn't even an employee, though. Then why was she putting an item back into the freezer? Because sometimes people do nice things, like putting an item back where it goes. But why would they do that? I don't understand. I'm sure you don't, Karen. I'm sure you don't. Why won't you let my kids harass your pets? You're so selfish. The events of this post happened in the spring of 2018. My boyfriend and I went to his parents' place to spend the weekend and we took our pets with us. My cat and my two dogs and his cat and dog. We were just sitting around chatting, laughing with his parents and sister when boyfriend's cousin came over unannounced with her three kids in tow. This was the second or third time I was meeting this woman and the first time I was around her kids. Boyfriend's mom asked cousin if everything was okay. She just smiled and said, Oh, my husband will be out of town for the weekend, so I thought I'd come over here with the kids. They were getting bored. I suppose it didn't cross her mind to call first. Then she saw me and commented, Oh, I see your new girlfriend is here too. Boyfriend's parents tried to introduce me to her kids. I'm guessing between the ages of 6 and 10 at the time, but they just ran off to watch TV. That's fine, no biggie. We all tried to make small talk, even as the television was turned on at a deafening volume. My boyfriend's dad had to tell them to turn it down. After we had had lunch is when trouble started. My dog and cat had been asleep when cousin and her kid came in, but now they were up and having a little snack and were noticed by the said kids. They instantly demanded that they be allowed to play with them. Now, my pets are not used to being around kids and I didn't want them to be harassed, so of course I said no, but apparently, these kids had never heard the word no before. The oldest one, a boy, kept trying to pick up my cat who jumped up on my lap for protection. The middle one, a girl, tried to grab one of my dog's ear and the youngest, a boy, tried to climb on my other dog's back. All of this happened within a span of no more than five seconds. I decided to raise my voice a little and told them to leave my pets alone. They looked shocked and the youngest one began to cry. The others, boyfriend, his parents, his sister, and cousin were in the next room and came running when they heard the commotion. The kid who was crying went bawling to his mommy and told her how I was being mean. The other two said they wanted to play with the dogs and cat and I wouldn't let them. Cousin decided to get in my face and asked how dare I yell at her kids. I told her to calm down and that she needed to teach her kids some manners and how to interact with animals and told her what her precious angels had been doing. She didn't think her kids' behavior was problematic because that's what kids do. She then proceeded to yell at me about how awful and rude I was being. This is when my boyfriend jumped in. He made her back off with a stern, do not raise your voice at her ever again. Cousin has always been a bit intimidated by my boyfriend and this shut her up. Boyfriend's parents and sister backed us up 
and told cousin she should teach her kids to be kind to animals. From the way they were talking, and as my boyfriend told me later on, this wasn't the first time cousin's kids had attacked someone's pet. My boyfriend's sister's dog at the time was really old and his parents had gotten a puppy a few months earlier. The kids had been told, in no uncertain terms, that they were not to go near them. The rest of the weekend was a mix of fun and awkwardness. The awkwardness was due to boyfriend's cousin who made it a point to stare daggers at me and my pets. Thankfully, boyfriend's parents' house is enormous and our room and cousin's and kids' room was on different floors, so we mostly just interacted with them during meals. Boyfriend's parents have a separate room for pets. It has several beds, toys, cat trees, etc. that family members' pets can use. During our stay, all of our cats and dogs would hang out in this room and cousin's kids were banned from it. Boyfriend's cousin complained several times that it was such a waste to use such a large room for pets and that it should have been a kid's room so her spawn could play in it, even though her kids had infested the rest of the house. I remember thinking, what a Karen. Over the years, this woman has lived up to this name. Why is it so hard for some people to respect others' pets? Here's the way I see it, Mr. Reddit. If you don't want my kids playing with your pets, keep them at home. Once you bring them out into the public, you have no say in what my kids do to them. Karen, <laughs> that literally makes zero sense. It would if you had respect for others, Mr. Reddit. You have no right to tell me what my kids can or cannot do. Entitled mom said I need to give her kid my place in line that I've waited for for an hour. So a bit of context. I'm 14 and I've never had a Kieran situation before until this happened last summer when I was 13 and I go with my cousins and uncle to a Cedar Point every year which is a theme park sort of thing. But anyway, here you go. Enjoy. Cast. We've got Entitled Mom. We've got her cool kid. We've got me. We've got my epic uncle. We've got my cousins 1, 2, and 3. We've got my aunt and security. So we went to a giant roller coaster and the wait is an hour long. We all wanted to ride it so we waited and we had a lot of fun playing games with each other and the kid behind us was pretty cool and he showed us some other games. I think he was like 11 but still cool. Then we got up to the front, we were next up in line and then Entitled Mom said this. Excuse me, can we go in front of you? My kid really wants to go on this ride. Cool kid. No mom, they're in front of us, they are next. Be quiet cool kid, we will be next. Uncle. Sorry, but we've been waiting for an hour for this. But you're next, so I think you're good. Excuse me, I am older than you, and I deserve this more. My kid does too, he has a terrible sickness. Uncle. Ma'am, please stop, I'm a doctor. And he is. Tell me his symptoms so I know what it is. By this point, me and my cousins were wondering why the ride was taking so long. It had broke, but they said it would be back up in 5 minutes, so we had to suffer through more of this. Entitled mom. Well, uh, he's coughing and sneezing and other stuff. Cool kid. Mom, stop. Let these people be. This is where crap gets crazy. I kid you not, she slaps. And my uncle then picks up the kid and puts him beside him. Uncle. Ma'am, why did you do that? He talked back, so I punished him. I look over and the kid just has tears streaming down his face. By now, the ride attendants came over with security and asked what happened. Entitled Mom. Oh, thank God you're here. This man assaulted me. Please take him away. Security. What? No, oh, I saw what happened. Now you come with me. No, we have waited an hour for this ride. We are going on it. Security. Ma'am, stop. You will have to come with us. Your kid can go on the ride if it's okay with these people. No, I will go with him. Me. Hey, uh, I can go with him if that's okay. Security. That would be good, but an adult must be with him. Uncle. Me and nephew will go with him. Security. That is fine. Come on, ma'am. Let's go. So we went on the ride, and I think Cool Kid enjoyed it as he was smiling after. The entitled mom was taken to the police station after. The kid's dad took him to his house. They were divorced, and my uncle and him were both doctors, so they talked for a bit. He was nice. The rest of the day was great, and the Cool Kid and his dad were let back into the park, and we hung out for a bit, and my uncle and him are friends now, so good ending, I guess. Do you like roller coasters, Karen? They're okay, but the best part is cutting people in the line. You really enjoy cutting in line more than the ride itself? Of course I do, because I deserve it. Well, you know what I enjoy, Karen? 
What? Reminding my viewers to smash that like button. Oh, you're getting good at that. Teacher kicked me out of assembly and, inadvertently, gave me a year-long recess. So, a brief backstory. They're not really crucial to the plot, but it paints a nice background. Any of those that read the story about my evil stepmother know that by the age 14, I was living alone in my father's house and making a pretty comfortable living renting out his rooms to students. Therefore, needless to say, for me, high school was a blast. Now, I'm not going to lie and say I was a good student. I was anything but. I mean, I never drank or smoked, but I skipped class almost more often than I attended. When I rarely did show my face, I'd often just go sit in any class that I felt like, whether I took the subject or not. Sometimes I'd just go to school for recess and go home again after. I was really living the dream of any B average student. What's more, I hardly ever got in trouble. Even when I got caught, the teachers would kind of just brush it off and let me get away without so much as a slap on the wrist. Most of the teachers either loved me or had long since realized there really was nothing that could be done about me, so they mostly just humored my antics. There was, however, one teacher that saw through my charms. He was the first language teacher, never my favorite or anything, but I truly held no ill will towards him. In fact, I kind of respected him for being the only one that actually bothered calling me out on all my crap. Although this seldom did any good, because whenever he threatened to call my parents, obnoxious kid that I was, I would just ask him, Um, which parent? My mother is in heaven. Are my father somewhere in Africa? If you manage to reach either of them, could you please ask them to check in once in a while? And this would kind of be the end of the conversation, because as arrogant as I was about it, my argument wasn't untrue. On to the day of the actual story. I was in my senior year and still attending classes on an off and on basis, but attending more than I did in the past. I wasn't trying to change my ways or anything, but I was in the process of putting together a four hour long video of our high school years and realized I had skipped so much that year that I hardly had enough footage to use for that segment. On this particular day though, I had picked the wrong day to attend and ended up having to attend assembly. This did not sit well with me as I had a personal gripe against our school principal for something that had happened in my sister's senior year, and therefore I refused to show him any kind of respect. He later got canned for having an affair with the PE teacher, so karma, but I digress. Now, as arrogant as I was, I do maintain that I wasn't actually talking as loud as the language teacher accused me of, but I will openly admit that I wasn't paying any attention to the principal's speech because I hadn't done so in four years and definitely wouldn't have done so that day. So maybe I was, who knows. He wasn't an unfair teacher or anything. Nonetheless, the language teacher pulled me out of assembly and forced me to go stand outside. So I stand there waiting. Several teachers pass me. One asks why I'm not inside. I answer that the language teacher kicked me out. They say, oh, okay, and continue about their business. Later, the assembly ends, the students exit, and I'm kind of standing there waiting to be called to the office or just for some kind of consequence, but nada, nothing, zilch. So I walk back to class thinking, um, that was awesome. Cue the malicious compliance. So the next week rolls around. I decide to attend school that day. Assembly time comes. The other students enter. I hang back and when the doors close, I'm still outside. I hang around again. Later, a passing teacher asks why I'm not inside. I once more answer that the language teacher sent me out and she again walks away without saying another word. The next week, I do the same thing, but this time, instead of hanging out where the teacher told me, I just take a leisurely stroll outside, getting fresh air and an extra long recess while the other students are stuck inside that boring assembly. The week after, I invited a friend to try it out with me. He agreed, and when the bell rang for assembly, we both just hung back while the other students entered the building. So now I actually had company for this extra long recess. This was like the best discovery ever. Needless to say, I never set foot inside the assembly hall again. I wish I could say the same for my friend, but after two weeks he had grown paranoid and started attending again. Chicken. I would have loved to have ended this story by saying that the language teacher eventually caught me and I could have told him that he was the one that sent me out, but that moment never happened. Even though I was in the wrong and I knew it, I still would have loved that argument. Did any of you guys ever skip class when you were in school? Please let me know in the comments. I skipped all the time and still got straight A's in all my classes. How did you get straight A's if you were never even there?
My parents were friends with board members. A new teacher once threatened to fail me for a project that I never turned in. He was fired the next day. Wow, sounds like you were quite the student, eh? The teachers must have loved you. Of course they did. I mean, who doesn't? Entitled Grandma Gets $30,000 Stolen From Her Hi everyone, I posted the Entitled Mom Takes a $5 Tip from an Ice Cream Shop story. Thank you Mr. Reddit for reading it. Made my week and a little update. My mom has gotten so much more kind and understanding of people. She's learned her lesson and she tips now. In that post, I mentioned an entitled grandmother. This is about her. The last words I ever heard from her in person was, Okay, when you two get older, make sure you marry someone with a lot of money. She's obsessed with money. I have no doubt she would sell her soul, grandchildren and children to the devil for it. Anyways, I was not in Cali during the events of this story and learned it from my aunt. So when I was in middle school, my mom had to come up to the Midwest to help my dad after a work-related accident. He's all better now. At the time, my cousin and I were the same age, but she was very flirtatious around boys. I've always been more shy and quiet, while she's been an extrovert with tons of friends. We're a yin and yang to each other. At the time, she was dating some bad boy. I knew nothing about him or his friends until this incident. For a little context, when my cousin and I were little, we played in my grandma's room a lot. Their headboard of the bed was drawers, and in the middle was a drawer we could never open. This will be important later, and I have no idea how she and her husband slept in that bed. I don't know how much information my cousin told them about my grandma's home, but her boyfriend at the time and two of his friends broke in. They stole a bunch of stuff. Then they got to the drawer my cousin and I couldn't open as kids. I'm not sure how they got it open, but apparently behind the drawer was a safe that had $30,000 worth of stuff in there. I've never seen inside the safe. No one in our family knew it existed except for her. So if you want to just imagine, it's full of gold and jewels. We only found out after my grandmother came home and found the place looted. Apparently, the kids pawned everything at a pawn shop in the town and the cops found them soon after. I don't know what became of the stuff in the safe, but apparently it was never found to my knowledge. Since the robbers were minors, they were sentenced to juvenile detention center. I think the longest sentence out of the three was a year. When my mom and I found out, we were angry at grandma and so was my aunt. There had been times in the past where my aunt and mom had struggled financially and could have used just a little money. But here, their mom was hoarding $30,000 that she could have used to help her daughters, but she didn't. And no, my cousin wasn't involved in the robbery. She had a bad boyfriend who did a bad thing, but it wasn't her fault. Anyways, I'm not sad this happened to her. I like to believe it's karma because of the rude way she treats not only other people, but her own family. Have any of you guys ever had something stolen from you? If so, what was it? Please let me know in the comments. And Karen, will you let our viewers know how they can get a special shout out in our next video? Join as a channel member today or join us on Patreon and I'll give you a special shout out in our next video. And if you'd like me to make a special video for you or a loved one, come visit us on Fiverr, link pinned in the comments below. And shout outs to our regenerals of the day. David, Kane, and Caleb.